All right, so I'm going to go over some basic uh, some basic commands. Uh, I'm going to open up this Rhino file, uh, lesson three, four basic and 2D commands. And I'm going to zoom in over here where it says join. And I'm going to temp I'm going to turn off my grid. So I'm going to type in I'm going to type in grid. Type in grid, uh, show grid equals no. And I'm going to come over here and say, um, go to print preview. Just so I can see these, uh, just see these examples a little bit easier. All right, so over here on join, I can see that this object is made up of one, two, three, four, four different lines. All right, so what join does, I can click on join, I can select all these objects. And it, select, it selects all these objects and it joins them into one uh, continuous curve. And the same thing, the opposite would be if I have this as one continuous object, I can select it and hit explode. And now it explodes it into each individual separate piece. Uh, group works uh, in a different manner than join does. These objects are these three individual uh, objects. I can group them by selecting group and hitting enter. And even though these objects never touch each other, they're still grouped. And I can do a single click and they're all selected at the same time. And the same thing here, I can ungroup these objects by either selecting, by clicking on group, ungroup or typing in ungroup. And now these are the individual pieces. All right, I can explode these in, in separately. So now these are the individual lines. So join, explode, group, and ungroup um, are four completely different commands. Um, you don't necessarily want to think join is the same thing as group or that uh, explodes the same thing as ungroup. Uh, another useful command is the mirror command. Type in mirror. Um, hit enter. And essentially what you need is you need uh, to give it an access point. So the start point and an end point. And I'll be copying it at the same time. And I hit enter and it essentially just mirrors that object. Uh, points on turns on the points of a of an object, so I can select this object and I can see this object is um, is joined. It's all one continuous piece. So I can turn uh, type in points on or click on the icon, and now I can move. For example, I'll select both of these um, points at the same time. Type in move. I have ortho turned on over here. So now I can move these these points and start to modify this object. Again, I'll hit move again. And I will select, for example, all four of these. Type move. So that's a pretty useful one to, to turn on the points and you can start to move the individual points around. Uh, hit escape uh, once or twice to turn that command off. And some 2D commands that come in pretty uh, pretty handy. Uh, this is the fillet command, which is right over here, fillet curves. By default the radius is 1, I'll just leave it there. And I'll click this curve and this curve. And now what it's done is it's giving me a fillet or a radius of uh, one. Or I can do the fillet command again. Instead of a radius of one, I can click here and say, for example, three. And click here and here. And now it's giving me a larger radius. Or I can make it even larger by six. And now it's giving me a larger radius down here. Uh, chamfer works in a similar way, except it draws a straight line. So I'm going to click and hold down 
and go to the second one, chamfer curves. By default, the distance is one and one, so if I click these two points, what it's doing is where these where this original line used to used to be, which is somewhere right in here. From that point, it goes in one unit this direction and one unit this direction, and it connects those two lines. So for example, if I did chamfer again, and I did uh, one and four, so now my distance is one and four, and I click these two edges, it's going one unit up and four units over. Uh, extend. Again, extend is in here. Uh, there's connect. Uh, there's extend. Normally, I just type in this command. So what it's asking for is the boundary line. So I select this line, hit enter, and I select this endpoint, and it extends it to this line. Uh, trim works in the same fashion. Just type this in. Uh, select the cutting objects. So for example, I'm going to select this object as the cutting object, hit enter, and then select object to trim. I'm going to trim this end part, and then hit enter, and it just trimmed that object. Or if you use trim, select cutting objects, sometimes I'll just select everything and hit enter, and I can go through and trim the parts that I don't want. Uh, split works in a similar fashion. Type in split. Select the objects to split. I want to select this split this object with this line. And now it's split this object into two pieces. And I can I can split multiple objects all at the same time. So I'm going to split all three of these curves with this curve. So again I'll type in split. Select all three of these. Hit enter, select this curve, and hit enter. And now I've had all of these split. Offset's a pretty useful one to, to begin to use. I'll type in offset. I'll use the distance of one. I'll take this curve and change the setting over here to none. Um, I'm going to offset this curve. And what it's done is it's offset it or moved it in the direction that I wanted to go uh, by one unit. Uh, I'm going to offset this one as well. I can go in either one or two directions when I offset. All right, so I'm going to offset in one direction. Again, with a unit uh, with a distance of one. I can type in different distances if I wanted to. For example, I can offset this one again and say I want it. 0.5 and now it's offset at half an inch all the way around. If you don't know the exact uh, distance, you kind of want to eyeball it. You can go through point, select this, and you can eyeball the distance where you want to offset it. A couple uh, offset options that you can have. If you type in offset, you can go to um, have it at a certain distance, a one for example, and go to where it says cap. You can say round. And when you offset it, it'll give you round edges. Or you can do flat. And when you offset it, again, it'll give you flat edges. Or if you don't want any edges at all, just make sure it says none. Uh, another way, uh, useful way to use the fillet command is to connect corners that um, that don't uh, that don't easily connect. I can just use the fillet command with a radius of zero and click this curve and this curve and it'll connect them with a sharp point. Again, same thing with these two. 
as long as my radius is set to zero, it connects them. And there's uh, the last one is to the distance command. I'm going to type in distance. Uh, I'm going to make sure I have my <clears throat> object snap turned on. And again, I have my useful object snaps and near, mid, intersection, perpendicular checked. <clears throat> I can click on the endpoint and the endpoint. And again, it tells me that this is 10 inches. I can click on <clears throat> the second one again, type in distance. And it's telling me that is 18 inches. Or if I wanted to, I can type in distance again and go to model units. And I can say, well, I want my answer to be in feet and inches. So when I look at my answer, it's now it's one foot six or I can type in distance again and say I want my my answer to be in centimeters. I can click those two points again and it's telling me what my answer is in centimeters but my units have never changed. My units are still in inches. And this really comes in handy when you type in distance and you go to feet and inches and you click on one point and you click on another point, instead of your answer being in inches, it's now in uh, feet and inches. And then just the two zooms to remember is zoom selected or ZS. So if you select something, just type in ZS enter, or you type in ZE enter, zoom extents or zoom everything, and it shows you everything that's on your screen.